Welcome back to Good Day. Well, the property I'm standing on right now at one time was Canada, a part of the British realm. A battle not far from this very spot was part of claiming this property for the United States. Head of interpretation at the site of many battles of the War of 1812, Fort Meggs, John Thompson. He joins this morning with an invitation to relive that history. Good morning, John. Thanks for joining us today. Good morning, Amanda. Thank you. What was it? It looks like we got a little taste right before we took the commercial break of what we might be seeing this upcoming weekend. What was that? <clears throat> Uh, yes, I uh, discharged uh, the flintlock musket, which was uh, the standard weapon uh, of the age uh, found throughout the American Army and a slightly different version of it uh, for the British Army. Uh, but it's uh, the weapon that we use here at the fort and uh, what we're going to be featuring throughout uh, Memorial Day weekend as our big event uh, gets carried out uh, over those three days. So you're in Perrysburg there at Fort Meggs for people who haven't come in, come out to visit. Um, you, you're going to be doing some reenactments and it all starts, did you say Friday? Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday or? Well, on Friday, uh, the reenactors will be arriving from all over North America. We've got quite a big crew coming in. Uh, people from as far away as Texas in the south and uh, Manitoba in the north. They'll be coming in all day Friday, so it's a busy day for us. Uh, but the festivities uh, for the public kick off on Saturday morning, and they will run through uh, Monday evening uh, for Memorial Day itself. And yes, we are reenacting the great first siege of Fort Meigs here in 1813, the uh, climactic May battles that took place um, in Northwest Ohio. And so we will have uh, the reenactors portraying that battle as well as camp scenes and cooking and music and everything uh, from the early 19th century and the War of 1812. And on Memorial Day itself um, will be a special day as well, right? Yes, Memorial Day uh, is something that we uh, honor uh, every year out here. Uh, Fort Meigs is a military cemetery uh, for the veterans who died here during the War of 1812, and they are still here uh, in 2023. So uh, we do have a formal wreath laying ceremony out here at three of our monuments, and we uh, parade with the public uh, to these uh, various points on our property uh, to honor those fallen and uh, speeches, poetry, uh, shots uh, in commemoration of uh, the fallen. It's a beautiful ceremony, and I really encourage anyone to come out and celebrate Memorial Day with us. Uh, John, talk a little bit about why it is so important that that history there is preserved and that um, you relive that too and reenact that to, to show these younger generations. Well, absolutely. Uh, the War of 1812, you know, is is not the most uh, uh, greatly covered in general histories of the United States. It tends to be a little bit overshadowed, but it's very important for us uh, as Ohioans or Great Lakers because this is the time in American history when this area is being settled by Americans for the first time. And of course, the battles are going to be fought uh, in our backyards. Uh, the war is going to be fought primarily on the U.S.-Canadian border, and our proximity here to Canada and the West Western Lake Erie Basin is going to make this an absolute hotbed for military activity. Uh, it's very rare to have so much property set aside for teaching, for learning, for remembering, for honoring, and we are so thankful here at Fort Meigs that we have this, that we can share with the public, share with the young, share with the old, uh, and uh, really remember uh, the lessons of history um, that we can all take forward as a single civilization. Take those lessons forward uh, to a healthy place in the future. Oh, wonderful. So. Uh, take, walk me through again what uh, the demonstration you did right before the commercial break. Uh, let's see it again. Walk me through um, because obviously, you know, to use that weapon, um, it's maybe a bit cumbersome, huh? Yeah, there's actually 12 different steps for loading the flintlock. Uh, first, you have to open uh, the flash pan here and reach inside the cartridge box on my right side and pull out a pre-wrapped paper cartridge, which I have here. Uh, the tail has to be bitten off and spit out uh, to access the powder inside. And then I'm just going to eyeball a small amount of black powder into the flash pan here. Mm -hmm. And it's not a windy day at all, so I can uh, show you guys this. But uh, above uh, the powder I just poured is the flint uh, in the frizzin. And when I pull the trigger, this flint's going to fly forward and scrape on this plate here, which hopefully should spark for you guys. And it'll, it'll ignite that powder there as the ignition system for the weapon. Uh, the rest of the charge has to be poured in the muzzle here. And then it all has 
has to be rammed down uh, to the breech of the uh, barrel where it'll contact that uh, that charge there and then the ramrods return so uh, 12 steps I've just carried out about nine of them wow. uh, quickly for you guys and the last three uh, would be uh, to to cock the weapon aim it and fire if you'd like to see it yeah. or at least I'll make the attempts to have it go off let's again. see if it works yeah so here we're going to pull it to the full cock here put a lot of tension on the internal springs I'm going to aim the weapon down range and give her a go it worked a lot of it worked <laughs> uh, lots of gray smoke mm -hmm. uh, very very uh, heavy kick this is a very very large and powerful weapon so a lot of kick on the uh, on the soldier a lot of gray smoke and a lot of sound but of course <laughs> in 1812 it's not just going to be one it's going to be multiplied by a hundred or five hundred or a thousand so the sound and the smoke is going to be just tremendous and that's what we're going to be seeing and demonstrating uh, this coming weekend so tell me once again what times you are open uh, Saturday Sunday Monday Yep, uh, Saturday uh, morning, everything kicks off. 9.30, the gates will open to the fort. Um, we're going to have demonstrations throughout the day. Uh, we do close at 5. Same schedule on Sunday. Show up early if you'd like. The battle's going to be a little bit earlier in the afternoon on Sunday. And then Monday, being a holiday, uh, the doors don't open until 12 noon. Uh, but we will be here still demonstrating throughout the day and honoring our fallen heroes. Well, John, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Again, Fort Makes there in Perrysburg. Come on out, bring the family for the holiday weekend. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you, Amanda. Take care. Yep, take care.